Hello and welcome to Wonder Dad Gaming. Of course, I am Lemon76 of Wonder Dad Gaming. Thank you for joining me today. I know it has been a little bit. Um, things have been kind of crazy. I did end up switching jobs and I'm um, working closer to home, which is really nice. So, unfortunately, I did push back a lot of stuff. But I have been working on this review for a little bit just because I've been doing a lot of testing. Um, as you can see right here, I have three mice in front of me. They're all technically heavyweight mice. Um, we have a budget. Basically, we're going from price to cheapest to most expensive. Pictech, this is, has a heck of a number, I'll go over it in a second. Logitech G502, and the new Razer Basilisk V3. So, originally I started when I wanted to do this video was a comparison between these two, but when I was looking to, for this one, this one popped up on Amazon as a recommended buy. And... I think with a coupon they had currently when I bought this, it was like six bucks. So um, we're going to go over its features today, each one. Um, we're going to go over the software because each one of these do have software control. The RGB, how well they perform, pros and cons of each one, and which one you should probably pick up. Um, so that's pretty much what we're going to do today. Um, so, if you are new to the channel and you do like uh, budget reviews that this channel is mainly known for, um, consider subscribing. Also, leave a like for the video. It does help out the channel quite a bit. So, let's go ahead and go over which, which and let's get right to it then. Let's go over what each mouse, each mouse is. So, the first one up is the Pictech PC278A. You gotta love the naming for these. Um, as you can see, all these are ergo style mice um, with the basically the thumb rest and the multiple buttons. Then the next is the Logitech G502. This one's been around for a while. This is the hero version, so it has the hero sensor. Um, this one's been around a couple years. Uh, it's a very, very popular mouse. Um, and then, last but not least, is the brand new contender, the Razer, Razer Basilisk, Va I can't speak today, Basilisk V3. This is the newest version from Razer. This one just came out a few weeks ago. Um, like I said, I've been testing all three of these. And like I said, we're gonna show the RGB and the software and pros and cons of each one. So let's go ahead and bring you guys in close so you guys can, I can truly show you um, what these look like up close because from back there, you're not gonna see a whole lot. So, okay, let's go ahead and bring this in. Okay. Now that we're in the close-up, uh, don't mind the glare, it's lighting I have to use right now because I have to switch my ISO on my camera. Um, so this is the nice closer look. I got them all plugged in so you can see their RGB. Let's go ahead and start with the, everyone pretty much knows about these two. Let's go ahead and go over the one that not too many people know about. Like I said, this is the Pictech. It does have your rubberized coating right here side buttons the front one is textured now it does have a button right here this is a you can totally program this to whatever you want dpi up dpi or dpi up dpi down it does have this kind of like soft feel to it um scroll wheel click down unlike the rest of the guys this doesn't have left and right uh selection on the other side we do have grooves for your ring finger and your pinky now on the bottom, we have five PTFE feet. Mm -hmm. Now this button, little button you see right here, this is for your lighting control. Now you can control lighting through your software, but you can also do it just by, hold on, I'm get my finger on the button here. So we go static, breathe. I like to call that, yeah, that's like visor, but with different colors. Fade in, fade out. This is kind of like that rainbow, but it's more staticky or a little more steppy. And this is like that smooth, flowing like RGB that you usually see on like Razor Mice and all the other ones. So that's pretty much an overview of the Pick Tech. Now, one thing I will go over each one real quick is the cord. This uses a really thick rubber cord. Um, I'm not going to tell you right now, that's the only real downfall I've found for this mouse, other than little things, but we'll go over those. So, it uses the heavy cord. Um, so that's the, the big difference between all the rest, where the rest use like a bungee style, or not bungee, but a paracord style. This uses like your old school mouse cord, like you'd see in an office mic mouse. So, 
that's the pick tech. So I'll set that over there. Next, of course, is the G502. I mean, man, there's been so many videos on these. Um, I mean, really, what is there to say? Um, same design, thumb rest on the side. On the side, you do have your forward and back and a third button right here. Now, you can, pro of course, program this button to whatever you want it to do. Um, you can have it programmed to... Um, now, out of the box, this is like a DPI shift button where you click it, it lowers the DPI. It's, a lot of people call them a sniper button. Right here, these two, again, all the, all the buttons on this are programmable. But out of the box, these two are your DPI. Then you have your uh, profile selector. This button right here, which is actually a hard button, this is for free spin of your scroll. And then left and right side buttons and textured along the side. And on the bottom we have our we have our uh, three feet. Now one thing this mouse does have over the other ones is you can open up and put weights in it. Actually let me go ahead and grab those weights for you really quick. Okay, here are the weights. As you can see I did not take them out of the package because I don't really use the weights but some people do want to use them. So these are the weights that you can add to the system to balance it the way you want. So that's that's in there. <coughs> now, of course, as you can see with this cord, this is a typical uh, paracord style. Um, it's a little tougher than the Razer, but it's definitely more flexible than, as you can see here. I'll show off real quick. See, this one moves a little bit more than this one does. So. And the RGB effects you can see are here and here. And last but not least is the new Razer v V3 Basilisk. Now, of course, along the same design, thumb rest textured. You got a paddle here, forward and back button. That is your DPI button right there. Now, unlike this one, which is a physical button that actually locks on the locks the wheel, this is an electronic button. So, under normal operation, you have your textured your basically your tactile clicks and under the click actually you can kind of hear it right there this activates free spin and you click it back it activates again now there's different profiles that you can add so it like spins on it like if it, you use it too fast or all those other features um, now this does have left and right like the Logitech and of course is textured along the side um, now this is using optical switches this is their version 2 optical switch so it's the fastest switch on the market this does not have weight adjust but as you can see here it does really it has the feet very large feet around the sensor it had this button right here this is your profile selector you have up to five profiles on the mouse and as you can see there is the glow from the RGB ring that goes around the mouse so you got the wheel the Razer logo and this aura glow which looks really cool on your mouse mat especially if you have a white mouse mat and then we'll show off the cord on this one as you can see this cord is probably the best for feeling like it's not there now all three of these on a bungee even this guy right here they feel wireless um, these two feel a little bit better this one every once in a while I'll feel but all three on a bungee these feel <clears throat> pretty solid now for weight wise this the razor is the lightest this comes in at 101 grams this boy right here which I call the chunky boy without the without the weights in it out of the box this weighs at 132 grams and the cheapskate let's call him that but no he's a good mouse um, <clears throat> he weighs in at 125 grams so if we were going to go by weight lightest to heaviest so okay now we went over the switches for this one let's go over the switches for these real quick um, these are your standard uh, the Logitech switches they've used for years um, actuation force on each one this one have the lightest actuation force like how much it takes to click it it's barely there and you click um, this mouse here is probably the hardest but it's not like hard it's not like <clears throat> I find that I never accidentally click with this one. This one I accidentally click with. This one's about in the middle. So that's pretty much it. Um, let's go ahead and do a click test for you guys.
Okay. Okay. Last but not least. Okay, that's pretty much what they sound like there. So what we're going to do now is we will go over to the PC and I will show you guys each one of their softwares and what they offer. And then we'll go to the conclusion and we'll finish this video up. So stick with us. Okay, we're going to go ahead and go over the RG or well the software support for each one of these mice. So the first one up on the board will be the PK. The are the PicTech mouse. Um the software is known as T21 wired gaming mouse. Yeah, it's it's I wish there was a better name for all these. They come up with just better names. So this is the software for the mouse. So as you can see, you have multiple profiles, three to be in total. Mode one, mode two. Um, so you have modes for each one. Um, you can do macros. So if you do have a macro that you want to put in on this, you can totally make it and assign it to one of these buttons. As you can see, it does have eight programmable buttons. Um, over here is your DPI selector. Now, I personally, out of the box, I found that the DPI was a little on the high side. So I definitely went in here and readjusted my DPI settings. Now if you go to lighting, there you can go through and you can change it to all different kinds of lighting. So there is some nice lighting options. Now, um, of course, your sensitivity, scrolling speed, double click speed, and then of course your final one, polling rate. Now out of the box, it wasn't set to a thousand hertz polling rate. So I would recommend if you get this mouse, click it to 1,000 hertz. And then over here, now when you're out of the box, see, that's what it it uh, defaults to 500. So I would definitely get in here, click it, click it to 1,000. But right here, that's this button right here. Um, out of the box, it's known as a three click. So it would be clicking this one three times. Well, what I do... You can go in and change it. And you can go down to here to key combinations. And what I have mine set for is reload. So you just click R or whatever you want it to do and click OK. And bam, you are programmed for that. And you can do this with all these buttons. You can change it to whatever you want. So, and then you could save it to a different profile and delete the profile and do all that kind of stuff. So, that is the software for. The uh, Pick Tech mouse, um, pretty nice software. It's, I mean, it's real simple, clean. And the nice thing is when you do apply this to your mouse, it actually programs into the mouse. So it will actually save it to the mouse. So even if you don't have the software running or you run this with, say, an Xbox or whatever you, you have it plugged into, you don't need the software for that to run, which I do enjoy and I did like. So. That is the pick tech. So now we will move on to one of the other guys. Okay, now we're into G Hub. Everyone, if you are, if you ever had a Logitech product or anything like that, this will look very familiar for you. Of course, there's my microphone right there. But we are going to the G502 Hero. See you. Let's go ahead and click the sensitivity. So here you can go through and you can adjust your different sensitivity levels, things like that, and your DPI shift button. Assignments, here you can go through. And you can program to whatever your heart's content is. And all that. Now, as you can see, I already have this one programmed for my reload. So that's pretty much, I mean, like I said, it's pretty simple. Um, you can program the keys to different actions. I mean, the level of things you can do with this one and program it to whatever you want is pretty impressive. Um, so there's a lot of different options you can do. And, of course, lighting. Of course, there's not much lighting on the mouse. You only have the little G and you have the profile selection. So there's not a lot. You can do cycle, breathing, sampler, visual, and fix and off. So there's not a lot when it comes to the RGB support for the Logitech, but it is here. Um, I just, of course, have it on cycling. So 
like I said, that's pretty much it for the, the Logitech. It's pretty simple, straight to the point. Um, like I said, different, many different customized options. And of course, you do have profiles you can have set here. Um, see, these are a lot of the games I play, so they're all on here. Um, so yeah, there's different profiles for different games. So you can go through and do it and make this to whatever you want. So, okay. That's the G hub software. Like I said, pretty straightforward to the point. Let's go ahead and finish it off with the razor software. Okay. Now that we're in the razor synapse software, which some people think is a bane and they hate this on their computer, probably because it's so like invasive. Um, cause as soon as you plug in like one of their peripherals, it's like, Install Razor. So, anyways, let's go ahead and go to the software function. Okay, so as you can see, I actually have it set for Fortnite, and I think I have a Battlefield setup. Um, again, R. You can see I have a preference where I have stuff done. Um, as you can see, it's pretty standard setup for uh, different options. So, if we wanted, say, this one program to a certain way, we click on it. Keyboard function, mouse function, sensitivity, uh, inner device switching profile. So you can do a lot of different things with this one too. Um, go to keyboard function, you can rebind it to whatever. There is enable turbo, which I find weird. Um, so there's different options you can have for programming, which is nice. So we're gonna go ahead and click that off. Now over down here too is the scroll wheel. Um, if you click this, it'll automatically uh, it's for scroll acceleration. Um, I don't have that activated. I keep it off because it scrolls too fast. Now from here, you can actually activate the, uh, free spin feature by clicking it. You'll actually can hear the, the mouse actually is clicking. Now here is the, called the smart wheel. So when you click this, what happens is if you're just scrolling normally, it works normal. But as soon as it feels that you like push on it hard, like you're trying to scroll a page really quick, it'll automatically click it into free spin and until it stops and then it'll click back into tactical. So that's pretty much it. I don't keep it on, I keep it off. So let's go over to performance. Of course your DPI function and out of the box, it does default to 100 or 1000 uh, Hertz. And I did adjust these a little lower cause I don't like super high uh, DPI. I like lower DPI lighting. Now, this is one thing I won't lie. I don't, I'm not a fan of. Um, only when I'm like in uh, this software can my, so if I go with, because the one I usually like to use is Wave. Um, every time I'm in Wave, it only works if the software is running. As soon as the software shuts off, it defaults back to Spectrum Cycling. I've tried doing it, I've tried doing all this stuff, and it doesn't. Now, I find this kind of cheap because even though Razer is always known for their RGB, is the fact that if you want any kind of advanced controls, you have to download a new, a whole different application to do that. I really don't like that. Just go back to the way it used to be, guys. We're trying to push more software on our PCs. And of course, last but not least, is uh, calibration. So you can have this set to, say, an actual Razer mat, or there's other mats on here you can set it to. Um, you can do it automatically. You can do manual calibration, and you can do, like, see all the different Razer surfaces and stuff. So you can have it calibrated for that surface. I just do smart tracking. I've never had a real issue. So, And, of course, you can um, lift off distance and things like that. So that's pretty much it for the Razer Synapse software. Um, but the nice thing is, too, if you do save, say, like R to the um, to a different click, you know, a different button, it will save in the mouse no matter if you're running this on PC or Xbox. You don't need the software running. The only thing I noticed that the software has issue with is the RGB lighting. So, OK, let's go ahead and go back to the conclusion and we'll wrap this video up. Okay, so now we've gone over the software, we did the up close, we did all that fun stuff. Let's go ahead and talk about conclusion. So, out of these three guys right here, you know, grab the last one here. All of these three guys, which one do I recommend? Man, that is a hard thing to add. I mean, that is really a hard thing to say. Because 
I went into this review video thinking, okay, Razer is the new um, boy on the block. It's going to have the most advantages, things like that. Um, that the Pictech being a basically $6 mouse, um, this ain't going to hold a candle to the other two. And of course, the Logitech being the granddaddy of the gaming mice, the heavyweight gaming mice anyways, um, would just probably end up winning. Oh, man, it became more than that. Um, honestly, I won't lie. I enjoyed using all three of these mice. Um, I would say if you are on a budget, and but you want, say, a heavier mouse for gameplay or, you know, for... Yeah, I, honestly, I find it for, like, Battlefield and games I really have to, like, hold, like, aim. Now, for, like, a Twitch shooter... I would say still something like the Ponage Ultra Custom or the Glorious Model D or something like that is a better buy because Twitch shooters you need to be the fastest. Where something like these guys, you know, these these heavyweights, um, about these are more about accuracy because you can really hold center. Now all my game playing I ever did, all these all three centers were great. Um, now one thing I definitely would say with this one is this doesn't have the annoying it's like the hallmark of a cheat mouse where it's that the bright red light and you know the laser mouse look this doesn't have this I don't know what sensor they're using in this so I couldn't find any details on that but it's a good one I never had a miss with this um, I never had issues with this um, like I say if you're on a budget this is a great option I mean a hundred percent now I would, I might actually, if you guys do want to see it, if you guys uh, comment down below and say you want to see me do a paracord mod, it'll be the first for the channel. I will do it on this mouse, on this mouse, and <laughs> we'll ta tackle that one together. Um, because I think the only thing that's really holding this mouse back is this cord. Other than that, this mouse is great. Um, I usually have this button right here set as my reload, and then uh, my other ones. And the nice thing about this one having side textures. Um, it's real easy when you're in here and you're holding this mouse to know where that button is and also this is out of all the mouse mice this of course has the ring and the pinky rest which I like there's one other downside with this one but this one's a, that's an easy this one's an easy fix is it's got rubber texture on this side but doesn't have anything on this side now when my hands are nice and dry it's not a problem I can easily pick this up and use it but when my hands are like even just a little bit oily for whatever reasons, my my pinky slips out of the groove and it's hard to like recenter and pick this up. But if you probably got a little grip tape and put it right here just a little bit, this would be a great mouse. So um, I really enjoyed this one. I will probably continue to keep using it. Um, scroll wheel, this would probably, I would say this one has the, the weakest, if you'd say, but it's really not weak. It's not wobbly and you could, I'm shaking the heck out of this thing. There's no rattle to this thing. It thing's built like a tank too. Um, I would say that it's the the scrolls with this one are not like as pronounced as the other two, but there it's still a decent scroll. And the click down on it is really nice. It has a rubberized thing. So that's enough with this one. So if you're on a budget, highly recommend. Okay, now we'll talk about the G502, the heavyweight, the the reigning champion as you may say it um i did enjoy using this one um i like the metal uh scroll wheel and i do love how um tactile the wheel is when i am in that mode like switching between weapons is super easy because these are so tactile um i'm really quick with these switches because these switches take very little to actuate but I did run into the problem where I was accidentally clicking when I didn't want to. Um, I mean, what is it really to say if you haven't seen any other video on the G502 that hasn't already been said? Okay, sorry about that. We had to uh, switch out cameras because unfortunately my battery died on my other camera. So, um, go back about the G502. Like I said, it's a great mouse um, with the metal scroll wheel, very premium feeling. Um, you can pick these up for around 45 bucks now. I think the last time I checked on Amazon, so not too bad. Um, the metal scroll wheel, I really love it. Um, it feels nice. Um, 
like I said, it's a, it's a good mouse. Um, if you're, I would say I would recommend this if you're in the Logitech um, ecosystem with like either controllers or I don't know, controllers more like headsets uh, and keyboards and things like that. I would recommend getting one of these. Probably if you're in the ecosystem already, you already got one. So um, it's a great mouse. I do use it um, between the three quite a bit. Um, I don't use it the most. Out of all three, probably use this the least. And then, of course, the last but not least, the new contender, new kit on the block, we'll say, is, of course, the Basilisk V3. This is a really nice mouse. Um, I would say, feel-wise, it's about as premium as the G502. Um, now, this boy comes in the most expensive. This one's $70. Of course, it is brand new. Eventually, we know that'll drop in price. So, out of all three, let me grab it a different way. I feel kind of weird holding it by the cord only. Anyways. Anyway, there we go. Um, so, eventually, these will drop in price. We know that. Um, but, should you wait? Um, maybe. I mean, for a wired mouse, there's a lot of really good wireless options out there. Um, but, this is a very nice mouse. It's very premium feeling. Um, I do like it. This is the pretty much the main mouse I've been using lately. I usually like using it when I'm doing like photo editing and stuff because it's so heavy. It's easier to um, like blend things and stuff like that. Um, the only thing I would I kind of caution about is because this uses an electronic scroll wheel stop thing that um, kind of like the Logitech one. But yeah, I'm gonna switch arms. But the trouble with the Logitech one or the nice thing with the logic one, it's mechanical. So you push down, you activate it, clicks, you feel it. Where the razor, and switch arms here. Don't know why my computer just yelled at me before. Um, this one has an electronic one. Um, you because when you hit the button, you hear it release, and then it'll scroll really, really fast. You click it again, it goes back to normal. So my only thing about that is because that's a that's an electronic, um, basically, uh, system in there. It's probably, it may fail one day. Um, so we'll have to wait and see to see how long it's going to last. But I, I would say that's probably the only point of failure I really see on this mouse. Other than that, it's a solid, solid mouse. Um, I would definitely recommend it if you're in the Razer ecosystem. Yeah, definitely pick this guy up. Um, it's very nice to hold in the hand, feels very comfortable and things like that. Um, like I said, all three of these mice I recommend. But like I said, the one I'm I was completely surprised by was this little fella. I really like this mouse. Um, it feels really comfortable in the hand. The only thing I want to do, like I said, I want to do put a little grip tape here on the side, and I want to do a paracord mod to it. I think I do those two things. This thing is going to be an amazing mouse, but especially for six bucks. Six bucks? I mean, come on, that's a really good deal, and it has software support. It's awesome. So, well. That is going to be it for today. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Um, if you did, please leave a like. Um, it does help out the channel. And also, if you're new to this channel and you do like this kind of content, do consider subscribing. Well, I will catch you in the next gameplay, the next review video, or the next live stream. And as always, I am Lemon76 from Winter Day Gaming. And of course, peace.